20% to end at 48.25 billion Naira. The company's pre-tax profit rose by 82.05% to 22.4 billion Naira, while the profit after tax jumped by 94.4% to 20.62 billion Naira. Transcore's board has now declared a final dividend of 0.03 copper per share for all its stakeholders. Let's find out how the domestic stock market fared today. It has reversed yesterday's loss with a moderate rebound following investors' renewed interest in key banking stocks. Chimezi Obiwago has the details for us. Thank you, Anne. I'm glad you could join us on Stock Market Report. It looks like the anxiety that trailed the election postponement has subsided in the equities market and attention is now focused on earnings. The market opened negative, but just before midday, when Zenit Bank released its full year 2018 results, declaring a dividend of 250 kobo, the narrative changed. Now look at the sectors. The banks, particularly Zenit and GT Bank, regained most of the Monday losses to push the banking index up by almost 3%. Next was the oil and gas. Investors found a safe haven in Oando, and that's why we have that 0.74% gain on the index. Interestingly, it was only the industrial sector that lagged, and that was because of the drop in Dangoda Cement shares. Overall, the index closed in the green, up 0.67%, back into the 32,000 mark. There was a lot of bargain hunting as a result, Total transaction value came in at 4.08 billion naira, and volume exchange was over 352 million shares. While cautious trading is expected to continue, traders say earnings are likely to drive sentiment these few days before the Saturday election. We can only hope for the best. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. Thanks a lot, Chimeze. We'll definitely hope for the best. But outside our shores, U.S. stocks have closed today's session over one hour ago in positive territory following reports that President Donald Trump may extend the March 1 deadline for key trade negotiations. Meanwhile, profit-taking hit stock markets across Africa, while Brexit's uncertainties continue its toll on European bourses. Let's take a And with those numbers, we'll end business news for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. It's back to you, Marachi. You first. First Bank. Still ahead on the news at 10, and coming from our London Bureau is Around the World in five minutes. Stay with us. Introducing the new Nivea Dry Impact and Dry Comfort Deodorants. Now with quick dry effect and longer lasting fragrance. Guaranteed to keep you feeling dry and fresh all day. Proven 48 hour protection and longer lasting fragrance with the new dry deodorants from Nivea. In 2018, a total of 5.320 trillion naira was collected as taxes by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. This is the highest ever collected as federal taxes in Nigeria. Taxes have become an important source of revenue, enabling the government to provide greater infrastructural developments in our country. Tax revenues enable government to provide more roads, more railways, more bridges, more housing, more schools, more students in schools, more hospitals, more security, and generate more power. Because Nigeria deserves more. Only your taxes can make all our our dreams come true. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. It pays to pay your tax. Welcome back. Let's get a wrap up on of the international news. Joyce Mahajas in London for Around the World in Five. Good evening. 
Pressure is mounting on the Venezuelan president to leave office, with Donald Trump warning all options are open to remove him from power. In a direct message to the military, he said those who support Nicolas Maduro would find no safe harbor or exit. The Venezuelan leader hit back, accusing Trump of making a Nazi-style speech and blamed the U.S. for the country's crisis. Danny Vucinovic reports. Maduro is not a Venezuelan patriot. He is a Cuban puppet. That's what he is. America's president wasn't holding back any punches. Every hit directed at Venezuela's leader and those who back him. Continuing to support Maduro. If you choose this path, you will find no safe harbor, no easy exit, and no way out. You will lose everything. Maduro went public with his response, lashing out in a televised address. Donald Trump was in Miami with a tired rhetoric questioning the right of our free country to adopt the ideas of human Christian socialism, our socialism, just like a Nazi-style speech to prohibit ideologies. The U.S. was one of the first to recognize Juan Guaido as Venezuela's rightful president, straining relations between the two countries even further. But Maduro, too, has powerful friends. In Argentina, hundreds of demonstrators marched against any possible military intervention by the states. And Russia is said to be delivering 300 tons of aid to ease the humanitarian crisis. Venezuela's government has also announced it will stage two concerts on the Colombian border this weekend to rival one organized by British billionaire Richard Branson, with money being raised for food and medicine. Danny Vichanovich, Tannels Television News. An investigation is underway following the deaths of three policemen in Cairo. They were chasing a suspect wanted in connection with another attack when a bomb was detonated. Several other people were injured in the blast. A pilot has been killed and two others injured following a mid-air plane collision in India. It happened during a rehearsal for an air show. Witnesses say the wings of the aircraft clipped one another. It's the second deadly accident involving Indian Air Force planes this month. Fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld has died at the age of 85. He'd been suffering from ill health over recent weeks and had missed two shows in Paris last month. The designer presided over Chanel for more than three decades and produced as many as eight collections a year. Japanese carmaker Honda has announced it will close its British plant in 2021, putting 3,500 jobs at risk. The company is considering moving existing production to North America and other regions. It's another blow for the UK industry, with Ford and Jaguar Land Rover also planning to cut staff numbers. Honda says Brexit wasn't a factor in its decision. This is actually being driven by some very big and, and really unprecedented changes in what we're seeing in our motor vehicle industry. And this is a move really towards electrification. Uh, we've started to see it in Europe, we've started to see it around the world, and it's in response to what our consumers are looking at and also what legislation is driving us towards. US Senator Bernie Sanders plans to run for president. The 77-year-old who mounted a challenge against Hillary Clinton during the last campaign says he'll seek the Democratic Party's nomination in 2020. Our campaign is not only about defeating Donald Trump, the most dangerous president in modern American history. It is not only about winning the Democratic nomination and the general election. Our campaign is about transforming our country and creating a government based on the principles of economic, social, racial and environmental justice. President Trump is being sued over his decision to declare a national emergency to obtain funds for his wall along the Mexican border. The lawsuit was filed by a coalition of 16 U.S. states led by California. And finally, Russia is returning to the days of old, powering public transport with coal. A steam engine has been reintroduced to the railways for the first time since 1976. The journey gives passengers a glimpse of what life was like a century ago. Many of the houses along the track haven't been modernized and still look the same as they did when the steam era began. And that's your international news around the world in five. 
We go now to Lumida Macaulay for Sports News. Thank you, Amarachi. Welcome to Sports News. The Agege Stadium in Lagos comes alive tomorrow as MFM face Sunshine Stars in an all Southwest derby in Group A on match day 10 of the Nigeria Professional Football League. CAF Confederation Cup campaigners Rangers are up against Wiki Terrace. Champions Lobby Stars will tackle Remo Stars, while Quara United will square up against Niger Tornadoes. Bendo Insurance will play Rivers United. Inyimba will battle Katsina United. In Group B, Nasarawa United will play Yobe Desert Stars, Plateau United versus Kada City, Kanu Pillars up against Abia Warriors, Aqua United versus FC Fanyuba, and Elkanemi Warriors versus Heartland. To the UEFA Champions League, it's all square as Bayern Munich are holding Liverpool to a goalless encounter in the first leg round at Anfield. Olympic Lyon and Barcelona also ended their encounter goalless. The return legs will hold on March 13th in Munich and Barcelona. The Handball Federation of Nigeria have unveiled its squad list of 14 players for the IHF Women's Under-18 Challenge Trophy. Familiar faces in the team are Tony Yusuf, Chioma Omekwe, Justina Imariaye, Hope Sunday of Plateau Peacocks, Kajidat Musabao of Seasiders Babes, and Tina Atansi of Abia Valence. The IHF Challenge Trophy is billed for Niame Niger from February the 25th to March the 3rd, 2019. To wrestling now, where the Nigeria Wrestling Federation have confirmed that it will feature in the German Grand Prix and the Bulgaria Banking Series. The German Grand Prix runs from February the 22nd to the 24th in Domingen, while the Bulgaria tournament holds from February the 28th to March the 3rd in Rus. A continent of three, a contingent of three female wrestlers and a coach will depart Nigeria on Thursday ahead of the tournaments. The wrestlers, all Commonwealth champions, will be led by the coach, Purity Aku. That's it on Sports News. The News at 10 continues shortly. And the main news again. A PDP leaders today replied President Mahmoudou Buhari asking him to withdraw order on the military to ahead of Saturday's elections. They're also accusing the ruling party of training operators in China to make card readers work faster. Also, INEC chairman raised hope on Saturday's rescheduled elections. Already 180,000 card readers reconfigured for the exercise. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night. And welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channel Television. I'm Millicent Wonka on the news this hour. The People's Democratic Party PDP leadership meets today as its National Executive Committee strategizes in the wake of INEC's rescheduled elections. Political activity is to resume for a few days after INEC lifts ban on elections campaign ahead of Saturday's rescheduled exercise. And the Court of Appeal delivered a judgment in the Quara All Progressives Congress leadership crisis, which now recognizes Bolarua led faction as the authentic leadership. The Balogun Fulani faction kicks plans to appeal decision of the appellate court. Welcome everyone to Lunchtime Politics. Well, let's start the dose of the noon political bulletin with the activities of the president, Mohamed Bouhari, who we understand is presently at a security briefing at the State House in Abuja.
The meeting has in attendance security chiefs as well as governors of Kaduna, Yobe and Bornu states. The meeting is set to center around security in those states, but not much of the rest of the agenda is known at this time. Uh, security in those states have raised concerns over the past weeks with banditry, insurgency and communal clashes, uh, which have led to several deaths. Well, after agitations against the ban on campaigns, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has lifted the ban on political campaigns ahead of the rescheduled presidential and national assembly elections scheduled for Saturday, February the 23rd, as well as the Governorship State Assembly and Federal Capital Territory Area Council elections on March the 9th, 2019. A statement by the Commission's National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee says, the approval for political parties and their candidates to resume campaigns was given after due consultation with parties, adding that the campaign ends by midnight of Thursday, February the 21st. While the Commission adds that it has also worked out a detailed plan to ensure that election materials arrive at polling units in good time for the prompt commencement of the polls on the 23rd of February, it also promises to provide an update at a press conference today at the Abuja International Conference Centre by about 3 p.m. The postponement of last Saturday's general elections meant so many things, especially for politicians who are now strategizing ahead of the rescheduled date. Now, Nigeria's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, are holding an emergency meeting of the National Executive Committee to re-strategize uh, the meeting which has been scheduled for today, February the 19th, is expected to host leaders of the party, including the presidential candidate, Mr. Tiko Bubaka. The emergency meeting is coming a day after the ruling All Progressives Congress also had a caucus meeting with President Bari in attendance. Well, let's get some uh, more information into the issues that will be raised at the meeting. Our correspondent covering the People's Democratic Party Secretary, Kayla Migwa, well, she joins us from uh, the PDP's national headquarters. The Wadata House. Hello, Kayla. What, what is the major agenda of the meeting and any major attraction of note? The 84th uh, of uh, such a meeting. We apologize for that poor audio and hopefully we'll connect with Kayla uh, subsequently. But it's also several hours of meeting late with a controversial statement talking about the All Progressives Congress, uh, the National Caucus meeting. Uh, and it has come with loads of reactions. Now, the president told party men that he is sure of the support of Nigerians across states and warned those he referred to as political thugs not to attempt to divert ballot boxes as anyone found wanting will be dealt with ruthlessly by police and the army. Well, President Bari says the army and the police have been accordingly instructed. He also says the government will investigate the rescheduling of last Saturday's election. Our correspondent, Terry Ikumi, reports. It's no longer feasible. 48 hours after the postponement of the 2019 presidential and national assembly elections by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the ruling All Progressives Congress has called an emergency caucus meeting for what appears to be a re-strategizing ahead of the new date, just five days away. The meeting is well attended, but noticeably absent are the governors of Imo and Ogun states. Your Excellency. First to speak is the national chairman of the party. He calls for a minute silence in honor of the party supporters who lost their lives during the course of the campaigns and goes on to make strong accusations against the electoral umpire and the main opposition People's Democratic Party. How can our brothers and sisters in Akwa Ibom State have confidence when the process, the recruitment, the training, the deployment of the Haddock staff is done between the INEC rec and the government of Akwa Ibom State? I can put my hand on the Holy Quran that INEC leadership shared, knew that they were going to postpone the election. They shared this information with the People's Democratic Party. I have no difficulties in seconding seconds to have a new INEC chairman. 
Following iron exposition that despite the postponement of the election, campaigns cannot continue, the APC national chairman, like the main opposition People's Democratic Party, insists on resumption of campaigns. The law says you are entitled to, to renew campaign up to 24 hours before the date of election. So without Ozoti INA, we are proceeding and we are ready to meet them in court because they cannot, by administrative fiat, amend or distort extra provisions in the Relevant Electoral Act. It's the turn of President Muhammad Buhari to speak. He described the postponement of the election as incompetent. The reasons uh, why such incompetence